everyone, it's Nell with Little Yellow House Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is December 13th. It's a Sunday. I can't believe we're already two weeks into December. The time is flying by, but this is always how the holidays kind of are for us and I'm sure for many of you. How are you all doing? Are you all hanging in there? I know that this time of year can be both wonderful and also very difficult. So if you are having a difficult time this year, um, just know that you have my love and my prayers and my support. I know this has been a really hard year for so many people. Sorry, I gotta turn off my notifications. Um, it's been a really hard year for so many people and I know the holidays are gonna look different for a lot of people and just know that you're not alone and that we love you and we support you here in the Stitchy community. This is such a wonderful community. Everyone's so loving and kind, so hang in there. Brighter days are ahead, right? We can, we can see the light on the horizon now with news, good news about a possible vaccine. I mean, I, I don't have a stand on whether or not you should get the vaccine, but I just, I am hopeful the signs are good that there is an end to all of this chaos in sight and just hang in there. Um, let's talk about some stitching. I don't have as much to show you this time as I did two weeks ago because I've been doing other things. You know, I've been gearing up for my show that is this week. I'm so excited our performances are this week. I'm gonna leave all the information down below. So if you would like to tune in and see me perform in an online um, theater experience, I will put all the information there. Tickets are $14. Um, per like family per viewer so you can watch it with your family for $14 that's fine um, there's a I believe there's a service fee that is not charged by our theater it's charged by the streaming service that that provides like streaming for theaters so there is a little bit of a streaming service fee I believe but it's a it's an affordable way to have a little bit of live theater and it's an adventure it's really fun it is difficult sometimes because we have nine different actors and we are all at our own homes with all of our own technology here's my little setup right there with my ring light and my computer and my desk and that's where i perform and so you know it's, it's interesting, but it's a really good show. This cast is incredibly talented. You know, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. The, my castmates are incredibly talented. We have some really fabulous character and voice actors who've done radio before. I mean, it's just a really great, great show. So all the information will be down below. Feel free to join me if you wish. And it does support um, our theater that did I, do you guys know that I serve on the board of directors at this theater? Anyway, um, our the, the arts have struggled <laughs> this year, which is putting it mildly with no live performances, no Broadway, no ballet, no opera, no concerts, orchestra. The arts have struggled, particularly the performing arts. And so if you have the ability to support my theater, your local theater, um, the, I know there are charities that have been set up to help, you know, out of work, not just the actors, but musicians, costumers, um, technical crew, people who have been out of work since like March. So, you know, keep those people in your thoughts. You, with the, I am a, obviously a huge proponent of the arts. Without the arts, I feel like our lives become very gray. Um, just think about how much you love your favorite musical or your favorite, you know, classical music or ballet. I, our lives would be sad without it. Ooh, I have one more thing I want to say. But anyway, um, yeah. So if you can tune in to support you know, me and my theater, I would love that. If you can't, that's fine, but maybe you have a local theater you can support. And anyway, just be, you know, keep those artists and performers in your thoughts because it's been a really hard year. Um, but I did want to say, speaking of ballet, for me, as for probably many of you, seeing the Nutcracker at Christmas time is like a crucial aspect of our holiday experience and there aren't a lot of um, 
live performances to view, but I'm going to leave a link down below. It was from playbill.com, I believe, and they have a guide to streaming the Nutcracker. Many professional companies across the country and the world are offering streaming versions of their Nutcracker, either filmed in previous years or they're doing certain excerpts with smaller groups. It, it varies from theater to theater, or excuse me, from company to company. Um, but I'll link that uh, down below so you can see that and follow that link to your favorite um, production of the Nutcracker and you can support your local dancers and ballet companies in that way. Um, if you want to know my personal favorites, okay, so for those of you who know the Nutcracker and know the different versions, um, I am a huge Balanchine fan, love Balanchine, however, his Nutcracker is actually not my favorite. So there are many companies that perform Balanchine's Nutcracker. Um, New York City Ballet, obviously. I believe Miami City Ballet does Balanchine's Nutcracker. I believe Pacific Northwest in, in um, Washington does Balanchine's Nutcracker. Many companies perform his. It's actually not my favorite version. I have one favorite version that I always love and it's because it's the one I grew up on and that is the San Francisco Ballet's Nutcracker. I love their Nutcracker. It's so beautiful and it is available for streaming this year. It's a little on the pricier side. I think it's around $50 but it's a great great show and that's much cheaper than seeing it in person let's be honest. Um, I love San Francisco Ballet's The Nutcracker and I love um, Ballet West in Salt Lake City, they do a great Nutcracker and actually Lou Christensen who founded that company was one of the three brothers who were responsible for bringing the Nutcracker to the United States in the early 1900s. So it's kind of, it has the distinction of being like an original Nutcracker. I don't know how true it is to his original version, you know, almost a hundred years ago now, but regardless it's a great version and another really fun one that's different from a lot of American Nutcrackers is the Moscow Ballet. Um, they have a, a streaming option this year, the Great Russian Nutcracker. It, usually they tour around all over the United States and perform it and uh, it's a lot of fun. So there's a couple options to look into if you're a newbie to the Nutcracker. If you already know what you like then go with what you like. Um, but if you have any questions about the Nutcracker and where to watch it, go ahead and comment down below and ask me because I love talking about ballet. Anyway, so yes, my show is this week. If you can support my theater by watching it, I will be deeply appreciative. But if you can't, find another way to support your local theaters um, and perhaps your local ballet company by streaming the Nutcracker. Um, I wanted to share a favorite. I don't usually do like favorites on my channel because this is about stitching, but I can't stop burning this candle. And some of you will already know about this. This is a White Barn candle, which is like the sister company, the White Barn Candle Company is the sister company to Bath and Body Works. The stores are actually connected and right next to each other in my mall. And my dear friend, um, gave me this as a gift for Christmas this year, this week, and I have been burning it non-stop. This is fresh balsam. If you want your house to smell like a Christmas tree farm, a Christmas tree lot, with a wood fire burning as you walk through the snow picking your perfect Christmas tree with your family. This is the candle for you. <laughs> I love candles. I don't have a lot um, because I have small children. So I usually buy like little wall plugs for scent or little wax melts or something. I prefer candles but I have small children and I feel nervous so I don't buy a lot of candles but this candle. <laughs> I can't stop smelling it. We don't have an actual like real Christmas tree this year. We went with just using our artificial tree. Sometimes we get real ones, sometimes we don't. This year was just a little busy and this makes my house smell like we have a real Christmas tree. It smells like a Christmas tree lot. Oh, it smells so good. So White Barn Candle Company, Fresh Balsam. Love it. It smells so fresh and clean, but 
Christmassy at the same time and it's not like a sweet smell. A lot of Christmassy smells are like apple and cinnamon, vanilla, gingerbread. They're very sweet smells. This is not. So if you prefer your smells kind of fresh, um, Fresh Balsam by the White Barn Candle Company is amazing. I can't stop burning it. I'm going to go light it as soon as this video is over. <laughs> okay, let's talk about stitching. We're 10 minutes in. I don't have any fully finished objects that are new to show you, but I had a request in my last video to show this, and so I thought I would pull it out. Ooh, it's dusty on the top. Um, this is a Christmas stitch that I finished a couple years ago, and my parents for Christmas that year gave me money to have it framed in this big, beautiful frame. But this is a Sue Hillis Designs, and this is Twas the Night. And <laughs> Twas the Night, sorry for the glare. Oh, that's a little better. Twas the night. Ooh, you can see the fabric. I stitched this on um, 32 count natural linen by Zweigart with the gold sparkle woven in. It's the natural gold um, linen. So you can see it has a gold sparkle in the linen. And then I stitched this piece. It's a big one. Um, Twas the night before Christmas. Apologies, that glare is awful. There you go. And I had it framed. Um, I had this framed at Hobby Lobby, which is where I have all my things framed because I lace them myself and then they just order me the frame and the mats and the glass and all that. I, had a, I have a double mat here. The inner mat is gold metallic and then the outer is red and then this beautiful ornate gold frame. This is much fancier and more ornate than I usually go with. My tastes tend to run more simple, you can see. Um, but for this piece, just the style of it, the fact that it's a Christmas piece, so it's only out for about a month of my year, and the style of it, it just needed a big, flowery, gold, old-fashioned looking frame, and I just love this. So this is hanging out in my living room. It comes out every Christmas. This um, pattern is not difficult to stitch at all. There are some fractional stitches in um, the ivy and um, yeah, the ivy, that's not, or holly. It might be holly. I can't tell. Holly or ivy, one of the two. Um, there are some fractional stitches, so I would recommend going with an even weave or a linen if you feel comfortable with it. It is possible to do fractionals with Ada. I've done it, um, but it is easier when you have a hole in the middle of your X's where it's easy to go in and out of. But anyway, the, the, the words, because they're words, they go super fast. So the, the most time consuming part of this whole pattern is the border. Um, and it's a joy. It is such a beautiful piece. It's one of my favorite things I've stitched for Christmas time. I also have my um, Advent animal, Advent calendar out from Brooks Books. Um, but I'm not showing it to you because we're in the middle of counting down till Christmas and my boys would be very upset if I moved it and one of the hidden animals was mysterious, like accidentally revealed. So I might show that to you maybe at the end of this year after Christmas is over. Um, but anyway, someone asked to see that. So that's Twas the Night by Sue Hillis Designs. And yes, framed at Hobby Lobby. Um, and I love it. So thank you to whoever asked to see it. It's a great Christmas piece. I don't have any new fully finished objects to show you, and I don't have nearly as much stitching to show you as last time because I've been working on my Christmas placemats. They're not done yet. You can see they haven't been bound. Um, and I only have five of them here. I have three more that I'm doing the quilting on. So all of the placemats have been pieced. Um, all of the strips have been placed and sewn down and now I'm just in the process of doing the quilting um, on either side if you can see yeah on either side of every seam I do a line of stitching so um, there's one of them and then I need just to trim down the excess fabric around the edges trim them down to size and then put on the binding which I'm just gonna use black bias tape um, for these um, but yeah, I've been working on these. They're so cute. Um, the giveaway is today for the two um, jelly rolls of the Christmas fabric that I used for these. And yeah, they're adorable. Um, some of the fat quarters I used for the backing. There's this like patchwork Christmas one. This one has a red buffalo check backing. This one has, oh, there's another patchwork Christmas. Here's a 
like chalkboard black and white Christmas motifs and then we have a green buffalo check on that one um, and so yeah those are some of the fat quarters I use for the backing remember that in the giveaway I don't have fat quarters to give away so you will need to choose your own fat quarters of fabric to be the backing for your placemats but you can find black or red or white or green these are easy colors to match um, for a, um, your backing fabric so that's what I've been working on a lot. I'm hoping to have those done within the next week because we're getting close to Christmas and I really want to use them. Um, we're still using my fall ones though, so who says we have to put them away after Christmas? Okay, let's talk about actual cross stitching. I do have, let me find it. I do have a finish and it's one that I told you I was going to get finished and that was my um, Shannon Christine designs um, my November installment so I finished uh, happy holidays which was nearly done and then I did deck the halls which was the freebie for this um, for November I love this something about the font looks very vintage and kind of retro and I just love it um, again there are some missing spaces where red beads will go but everything else is done the gold crinix beautiful I mean it's just lovely so that was there there was sort of like two mini finishes I finished this one and started and finished this one I have my December charts. I have not started them yet because I've been working on something else, which I'm gonna show you. But it is a plan of mine to do my December charts. Oh, this is December. This is the last installment, Believe with Santa's Hat and Cookies for Santa. So I will be working on these. Um, and these probably will not get done and fully finished for this Christmas, but they will be stitched. And so I will be able to fully finish them and do something with them for next Christmas. And I'm really excited. So those are my finishes. And they're my only finishes because then I went to my um, whip bin and pulled out all my Christmas or winter related projects that have been started and put them in here. And I've just been choosing what I want to stitch. I have one, two, three, four, five Christmas or winter related things that are started right now and I've just been working on them and the one I decided to start working on first is one that we haven't seen in a couple years and I really was feeling it so I pulled out my heirloom nativity sampler this is by the Victoria sampler if you've been watching me for a few years you've seen this if it's if you are a new subscriber you probably haven't seen this yet because I haven't worked on it in a while um, but this is a gorgeous sampler by the Victoria sampler I purchased the two accessory packs that they put together to go with this. So I purchased all the silks and threads and specialty fibers to do this. Um, and last time you guys saw this, I, I started at the top and I've been working my way down and I had finished this flowery border piece right before the wise men picture. I hadn't worked at all on the wise men yet. That's the last thing I did before I put it away last year or possibly the year before it's been a while and let me move this over my needle miner my wise men are almost done so here is where I am so I've been putting in the wise men um, the wise men are finished I'm working now on filling in some snow and there will be snow in the air the only things left to stitch are a camel and a tree and you know filling in all the snow and that's it so I am nearly done with the wise men um, or excuse me the wise men uh, what do you want to call this scene tableau <laughs> the, the wise men section of this and then I will continue down and I will be I mean I think more than halfway when I finish the wise men I've got another like lace band some more words some more um, border um, bands and then we have the actual nativity scene one more line of words and then I get to do the hard anger which I'm actually really excited about I taught myself how to do hard anger a couple years ago and uh, it's not difficult if you're afraid of hard anger it's not hard you just need to go slowly and carefully especially when you're cutting be really precise when you're cutting but it's not difficult and it's a miracle to me how 
you can do heart anger and then cut your fabric and not have it, all of your stitching ruined. It's amazing. So I'm excited to do that. A little nervous, but I'm sure it will go great. I'm sure it will be fine. And yeah, I'm really excited. So I've been working on this, which is why I don't have a lot of other stitching to show you. Um, this has kind of been absorbing all my stitching time. However, this is a little bit too detailed and like finicky for me to work on when I'm in rehearsal for my show. So I've been doing other things during rehearsal and it's actually getting harder and harder for me to do things because the show is moving faster now that we're like getting ready to perform. So I haven't been stitching as much during rehearsal, but I thought it would be fun since that's all I've got to show you as far as stitching. Let's go through and look at what other projects I could work on. Um, I could work on my December installment for Shannon Christine. I could keep working on heirloom nativity sampler, or I could pull out one of these. This is not started. This would be a new start, but this is the last installment of my Country Cottage Needleworks Cottage of the Month, December. So I have all the threads picked for this. I'm like ready to go. I just haven't actually started it yet. My fabric um, and my pattern. So that could get started. Um, I could, ooh, yes. I could keep working on my next Mill Hill Santa. You guys know I collect these kits and I have like 11 or 12 of these done. Um, these have always appealed to me more than the Prairie Schooler Santas. So I feel like, you, Everyone needs to collect some kind of Santa. Prairie Schoolers, if that's your thing, or the Mill Hill Kits, if that's your thing. I just love them. They're dimensional, they're colorful, they're some of the, the themes that change every year are so funny, such a hoot. Um, so Mill Hill Santa, this is what I got done. Not a whole lot. I think I started this for Stitch Mania. Just got his feet and uh, some of his pants. Um, I bead as I go, so you can see some of the beads are already on. With these Mill Hill kits, it's very easy to bead as you go because it's on perforated paper. It doesn't have to go into a frame for me because I don't stitch in hand. And so I don't have to worry about beads getting smooshed um, in, a, in a frame. And because, they, because it's on perforated paper, it's much sturdier. And so I just bead as I go. When I finish the stitching in an area, I go ahead and put the beads in. There's a blank space here because there will be a deer leg there. <laughs> you can see so yeah uh, this definitely could use some work these stitch up really quickly I could if I worked on this by itself I could finish this in like three or four days they don't take very long um, and I tend to because these come with their threads I usually just make myself a little thread card with the symbols it's easier than trying to bobbinate them um, because they're small projects and it's just easier to do it this way so I could work on my Mill Hill Santa. What's this? Oh, this would be a new start as well. Because I finished my little bits of Halloween, I could start my little bits of Christmas. Again, I will be doing the square one. Um, you guys saw, I chose this picture, this plus gingerbread. Gorgeous, gingerbread brown color. It's beautiful, 32 count. I do have my threads picked for this. I, I'm not 100% certain about these threads. Um, these are my main colors, this red and green. Everything else there is just like for accents bits. It's red, green, and white. So I have this red, which is Love Me Red from Victorian Motto. And I have this green, which is Blue Spruce by The Gentle Arts. And I think those are the red and green I'm gonna use, but I need to do a couple test stitches before I completely commit to them. But all the colors are, are picked and kitted up and ready to go so I could start that if I feel like starting a new start. So that was the drawn thread, little bits of Christmas. And then the last one I have in here, there we go, is, oh, this would also be a new start. Okay, so three of these in here haven't even been started. I only have two active Christmas whips and that is my heirloom nativity sampler and my um, Mill Hill Santa, no, three Christmas whips. Mill Hill Santa, heirloom nativity sampler, and Shannon Christine ornaments. Um, but this would be another new start, and that is Rack Stack. And I did finally decide 
you guys were like evenly split on which one I should go with, which fabric I should go with, which helped me not at all, but that's okay because I was evenly split too. I pulled threads and did like a floss toss and this is what I decided to go with, the lighter of the two, which is the 32 count glacier. The lock looked beautiful, but some of the darker colors um, got lost on the lock where the white, I was worried about the white getting lost on this and it doesn't. The white looks great on this. So this is the one I went with. The colors that I picked, again, I already kitted this up. That's like the corally red for the berries, the light green. Here's all the varying shades of like brownie gray for all the deer. <laughs> we have a light, a medium, and then like a dark black gray color. Um, got a couple bobbinated ones there. So that's, those are the threads for rack stack. And I could start that if I feel like a new start. So I've got three things kitted up and ready to go that I can start if I want to. If I don't get them started this year, that's fine. We'll just put them off until next year. But I am having fun stitching this. And before I put this away, I think I would really like to get the wise men scene finished and maybe the lace band or something. I'd like to get a little bit further on it before it goes away. But again, I'm a seasonal stitcher. I stitch with the seasons. So as soon as Christmas is over, I, I don't often feel super motivated to keep working on Christmas things. It's just my nature, I guess. Okay, that's all the stitching. Let's do, I have a quick little bit of haul to show you and then we will get into the giveaway. So, haul. Let's go this way. I got my, um, no, are these November? I think these are my November threads. Yes, these are my November threads from Victorian Motto. I had someone reach out and ask me, I can't remember if it was on Instagram or YouTube or email, ask me about, you know, Victorian Motto and how far delayed they are back. It really, I can't answer that for you because I, I mean, I feel like Nancy and Tom have been very transparent about the fact that they are behind and they apologize and they send us regular updates on how they're doing. At the end of the day, listen, if you are frustrated and feel like it's not worth it to you to still be waiting for your threads, then that is totally understandable and I don't think you're a bad person. I think that's totally reasonable. Cancel your subscription. Nancy and Tom are great about refunds or you know canceling it for you right away they will work with you um but at the end of the day my opinion is always going to be that nancy's stuff is worth the wait if you have to wait two three months for something i still think it's worth it because the quality of her products is so excellent her fabric her threads everything so i mean it is what it is. It's been a crazy year. It's been a crazy year for them too. They also, I think part of the reason it's been such a crazy year for them, besides the fact that I know they've had some health issues to deal with, is that they had a huge influx of subscribers right as the pandemic was hitting. And all of a sudden supply issues and because of me and other YouTubers who get their threads and love them I think a lot of people signed up because her prices are excellent and everyone was like yes I want to subscribe and they had this huge influx of subscribers to their clubs right as supply issues started to become a problem and health issues started to become it was just like bad timing honestly so I love Victorian motto I will always love Victorian motto I will always think that Nancy's stuff is worth it and that's my two cents. We're not gonna talk about that anymore. These are my November threads. Um, I had someone ask me which club I'm in. I get six skeins from their um, regular limited edition club. She has two thread clubs, a regular and a um, regular limited edition and a primitive limited edition. Um, I've gotten the primitive before. Sometimes I feel just like switching it up and I switch the club and Nancy's great about that. But I typically go with the regular because I like brighter colors. And these were the November threads. Oh. Can't you just see like doing a whole chart in just these colors? Look at these two like turquoises. Oh. This is Evergreen Spruce and Misty Sea. Oh, 
so pretty and then we've got this this one's highly variegated this one is rainbow quilt and you can see dark and light pinks that's really beautiful that would be so pretty for like a like a primitive monochromatic um, sampler like the pink and the red maybe Valentine's primitive quilt we've got a light kind of sagey green stuffed celery love it that one's got some lovely variegation you can see that like celery green then we've got a blue this is kind of a primitive looking blue even though I'm in the regular floss cup that doesn't mean that I'm getting neon colors I get lots of lovely colors this is quilt gathering oh I love that name it looks like an old faded blue quilt and then the last one this is gorgeous olden maroon beautiful rich maroon it's showing more red on this camera because cameras have a hard time picking up purple but it does have a bit more purple in it that's a little bit more accurate you can see back here against my skin here it looks more red you can see it's a little bit purplier. that's pretty dark dark red so that was my November threads from Victorian motto <laughs> and then I got a few things I love eBay like many people do and there are a few things that I'm always keeping my eyes out for on eBay and one of those things as you've seen are the Mill Hill Santa kits um, they have steadily increased in price since I first started collecting them about 10 12 years ago over the last few years you used to be able to get them for around seven to eight dollars in a store now they're more often between ten and twelve dollars in the store but if you watch eBay every once in a while you can find older kits for less expensive and I always shoot to get them between five and eight dollars if I possibly can and someone on eBay was selling two of the older these are much older kits these are some of the original I don't think they even have the year on these if anyone knows which year the Northwood Santas were they were a long time ago um, and so I got two of the three Northwood Santas um, for about seven dollars a kit after shipping so I thought that was pretty good we have juniper branch Santa and we have holly berry Santa and there's a third one from this year in this series that I don't have yet but I'll find it um, these are really cute they come with they each have a bell incorporated and they come with it in the kit they come with a little tiny jingle bell um, I didn't know that about the Northwood Santa so found those on eBay keep your eyes open if any of you are have Mill Hill Santa kits that you are not going to stitch and you would like to sell them to me <laughs> as long as they're ones that I don't have yet please reach out to me I'm always looking for them and because I do collect them and I do stitch them I have 12 or 13 and eventually I'm gonna hopefully have all of them stitched so I did not have any from this series yet so I got two of the Northwood series I can't remember what the third one is called from this series I want to say it's like a pine tree or a spruce or something we have juniper branch and this one's holly berries and I can't remember what the third one was but anyway got those on eBay for a very good price these I just bought from 123 stitch because I wanted them and I was inspired to get these because of Priscilla from the Real Housewives of cross stitch she always has these up on um, in her when she does her house tours she talks about them these are prairie schooler charts that were retired um, and then were reprinted so unfortunately all of these are the reprints which are not as nice as the cardstock charts but at least I have the chart I'm not gonna complain too loudly because they brought them back into print so I got the four seasonal prairie schoolers so this is the autumn one and Priscilla has these the square ones in her like decor they do have a longer one with lots of words and then the square one and you can also do like the little square motifs as individual ornaments but I have a feeling I will do these just like Priscilla because I love Priscilla um, so I have autumn leaves which looks like that winter wind so cute I love prairie schooler spring has come which is the spring one with all the little farm animals so sweet and then summer breeze is the summer one with 
the beehive and the swan. And I really like this one for the summer. I think that's pretty, but I wanted them. And I saw them on Priscilla's like house tour and I was like, I want that Prairie Schooler chart. It was out of print for a long time. And then I was on one, two, three stitch and I saw that they were back. They had reprinted them. So I bought them because you know, add them to my collection of seasonal or monthly things. You guys know I, I'm attracted to those. That's it. Let's do our giveaway. So the giveaway for this week, still in the Walmart bag, hashtag classy, are two of these jelly rolls of Christmas fabric that I have been using to make my um, Christmas placemats from Walmart. Each of these has 20 strips, so they are half the size of like a regular jelly roll you'd buy at a quilt store. Usually they have 40 strips. These are half size and they were about $6 a piece. So if you can find, um, I saw that my Walmart has more like fabric in these like jelly rolls and, and um, fat quarters out. So check your Walmarts, check over by the fabric and craft area and see if you have them. But I grabbed two extra for you guys. And in my last video, I asked you to please share with me to enter the giveaway. I asked you to please share with me what some of your favorite holiday traditions are. And guys, reading all your comments, I got choked up multiple times. Um, many of you shared that you had similar traditions to our family. We also do Christmas jammies every year that we open on Christmas Eve to get to wear to bed on Christmas Eve. Um, many of you do um, like doing Christmas cookies and delivering them. We did that this year. In fact, I'll include a link down below with some of the recipes that are our favorites for Christmas cookie platters. Um, many of you, your traditions revolved around family or church activities. Um, some of you who are Catholic shared about going to midnight mass, which I have tender remembrances of because for a while I went to a all girls Catholic school. And even though I am not Catholic, um, we got to attend mass every week. And I just loved how, um, how beautiful the music was and how I don't know, the Christmas Mass was always just such a, a beautiful, um, almost aesthetic experience, just being in the, the cathedral and anyway, I just, I loved hearing your Christmas traditions. It just made my heart happy and choked me up. And some of you were talking about how this is your first year without a loved one who has passed in the last year and I'm gonna cry and I don't want to. Um, and just know that I am so grateful that you shared those tender things with me. And um, I said a prayer for each of you. Um, and yeah, the holidays can be hard if you're missing a loved one. So anyway, I just, it was so wonderful to hear all of your, sorry. It was so wonderful to hear all of your beautiful holiday traditions. Okay, let's do the giveaway. I already did it. I'm gonna pull it up. I used the random comment picker from YouTube this morning and the winner of the Jelly Rolls of Fabric is Goldiefish LS, Lucinda. Goldiefish LS, Lucinda, congratulations. You've won the giveaway. Email me, um, at, uh, my email's linked down or listed down below in the comment box, in the not comment box, description box, I cannot speak. Um, so send me an email with your mailing address and I'll get those out to you. Um, but I just want to read Lucinda's comment. She said, congrats on your performance. I will be praying things get back to normal for next year's performance. Thank you. Uh, love all the finishes. Such a great use of your downtime. My favorite family tradition is that Christmas is just for me, my husband, and kids. We let the boys open their gifts and just spend the day together. The boys do get to open one gift on Christmas Eve. Thanks for sharing. Have a blessed week, Lucinda. So thank you for sharing that, Lucinda. Thank you for entering the giveaway. Get in touch with me and I'll send out your giveaway this week. Um, it might take a little while to get to you because it's the holidays and shipping and mailing stuff is chaotic right now, but I will get those out pronto. 
that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you've had a wonderful week. I hope that you are um, staying healthy, staying safe, and that you are finding ways to make this very strange and different Christmas um, special and or holiday season, no matter what you celebrate. If you don't celebrate Christmas, um, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Festivus, whatever it is, I hope you're finding ways to make this time of year special for you and your family. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got, guys. Take care, and I'll see you probably in a couple of weeks. Bye, guys.